فقال تعالى وعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين صدق الله صدق الله العظيم حميدا ومصليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد Respected brothers, elders, and sisters in Islam, we thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tremendously for gracing us, blessing us, allotting us, providing us this opportunity to come today on this blessed and sacred day of Jumu'ah to perform our Salatul Jumu'ah. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming and may Allah reward us graciously and generously both in dunya and in akhirah. No matter what portion of the year it may be, whether it be the first month of the Islamic calendar, Muharram, whether it be the Ayyamul Hajj and the days of Hajj that we have just witnessed, whether it be the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah which we had witnessed, whether it be Ramadan that we also had just witnessed the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the staying away from vices and sins and the disobedience of Allah this is not something seasonal the obedience of Allah the staying away from the disobedience of Allah, the staying away of sins and wrong and vices, this is not seasonal. It is not something we do on occasions. It is not something we do part-time. There isn't a period in the life of a Muslim, there isn't a period in the life of a believer in which he exerts himself to do good and then he relaxes. This season of goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala periodically gives us like Ramadan, 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the Ayyam of Hajj, the fasting of Ashura, these season of goodness and ibadah gives us an excuse to revitalize, to rejuvenate, to re-energize ourselves, so that we can use them and bring our entire life on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Scholars have mentioned, in the dunya kulluha shahru siyam al muttaqeen. The entire life of a person, the entire life of a person is like the month of fasting. And the day of their Eid will be the day of their death. The day when they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are fasting, obviously, you will stay away from the disobedience of Allah. You will not violate any of the commands of Allah. 
you will try your utmost to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the exact manner is a person's life. Your entire life you bring on the obedience of Allah. Not on occasions. Not on seasons. We come on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we relaxes. We go back to our same behavior and attitude. So there isn't a period of high and low in the, in the life of a believer. When we look into the life of Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were individuals who were given the good news and the glad tidings of Jannah in this world. Each and every companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the good news of Jannah in this world. Allah says in the Quran, Kullan wa'adallahu al-husna. Each one of them, there were how many prophets? Allah sent 124,000 prophets. There were how many companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he delivered the khutbatul wada' the exact amount. 124,000 sahaba were present on the occasion of Hajjatul Wada'. So all 124,000 companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah says about each one of them, Kullan. Kullan means each one without exception. Wa'adallahu al-husna. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala promised. The word wa'ada means promise. Allah promised them Jannah. We also read in the Quran, Radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them being qualified for Jannah. If you look in the lives of Sahaba, any Sahaba, you would never see any one of them becoming complacent or satisfied with what they have done or what they are doing. Never you will see that. Look into the books of Sirah. Read Hayatul Sahaba. Read the lives of Sahaba. You would not find any Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he or she was ever complacent or satisfied. They never took their foot off the accelerator when it comes to doing good. They continued until death. For this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran. Never stop. Never feel satisfied. Never become complacent. وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Allah. Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously until death comes to you. There is no period or there should not be a period in the life of a believer that he exerts himself in doing good deeds and then he relaxes. One Sahabi, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Prophet of Allah, sum up to me what is the statement of salvation? What is success in Islam? Tell me. And I just want you to give me an answer in just one statement. Hear what the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling this companion. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Qul amantu billah thumma Two words. 
قل آمنت بالله say I believe in Allah say I believe in Allah and then do what after that ثم استقيم bring your entire life in compliance and in conformity with the proclamation you just made. Bring your entire life on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what it means. I'm going to give you a few examples of just two or three sahaba. As I said, each one of them were given glad tidings of Jannah in this world. Still yet. They never took their foot off the accelerator when it comes to doing good. When it comes to the obedience of Allah. Not like you and I. There was a great Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ by the name of Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu. Do you know who was Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu? He was the conqueror of Egypt. In the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu deputed him to Egypt. And he conquered Misr, he conquered Egypt. Before he accepted Islam, he fought against the Muslims in many battles. He fought side by side with Khalid bin Walid in the battle of Badr against the Muslims, in the battle of Uhud against the Muslims. But when he, Allah gave him the tawfiq to accept Islam, in Sulah Hudaybiyah, he came to Medina. He came to accept Islam. He comes in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Oh Nabi of Allah, I want to accept Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, stretch your hand out. Put your hand out. He stretched his hand out. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also stretched his hand out. And he said, put your hand in my hand and take the allegiance of Islam from my hand. When the Nabi of Allah put his hand out, the Sahabi pulled back his hand. So the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Amr, what is the matter? You came to accept Islam. Why not? Why now? You, you're pulling back your hands. He said, Oh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I would only accept Islam on one condition. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Amr, what is that condition? What condition are you stipulating? He said, Oh Nabi of Allah, I will only accept Islam if I know Allah will forgive all of my past sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Amr, don't you know Al Islam yahdimu ma kana qabla? Islam eradicates, emits, washes out, removes everything before it. Whatever you did before Islam, all are gone. Don't you know Hajj cleanses a person from all sins? Man hajja lillah falam yarfuth wa lam yafsuq raja'aka yawmin waladatu ummu. Don't you know that whoever fasts in Ramadan, when Ramadan is over, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares about that person, that you finish Ramadan like the day your mother has given birth to you. These are deeds that forgives all of the sins of a person. He said, oh Prophet of Allah, if this is the case, now I will accept Islam. And he accepted Islam. When he was dying, he was dying. The time came for him to leave this world. A lot of people gather around him to visit him at the time of his death. And his eyes were fixed and his gaze was on the wall. He was not looking at anyone who came to see him. And he was weeping and weeping and weeping. His son was beside him. 
And his son looked at the father and said, Dad, why are you weeping in this manner? Are you weeping because you are leaving this world? Or are you weeping for any other reason? For I have heard, the son is telling the father, I have heard not once, but again and again, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had given you the glad tidings and the good news of Jannah. You are going to Jannah without doubt. You are guaranteed Jannah. Why are you crying? Why are you weeping? He said, oh my son, when I look back at my life, my life can be divided into three phases. The first phase of my life was that phase when I was an enemy of Islam. I had not yet accepted Islam. The Nabi of Allah was the most hated person to me on planet Earth. He said, if I would have died in that phase of my life, hellfire would have been guaranteed for me. But Allah give me Tawfiq to accept Islam. And I accepted Islam. He said, if I would die in this second phase of my life, I am sure Allah would give me Jannah. But he said, then came the third phase of my life, which was after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah passed away. And we were made governors and rulers of the world. What is he saying? What was the third phase of his life? We were made governors and rulers. I just mentioned that he was the governor. He conquered Egypt. We were made as governors and rulers of the world. So I don't know. In that phase of my life. Whether I pleased Allah or not. How Allah will deal with me, I don't know. Who is saying this? Didn't he accept Islam? What Islam did? Forgive all his sins. He was clean, complete, clean slate. Didn't he perform hajj in his life? Yes, he did. What hajj does? Forgive all your past sins. Didn't he fast in Ramadan? More than once? Yes, he did. But what is he saying at the time of his death? He was guaranteed Jannah. But he's saying that I don't know how Allah will deal with me after my death. I have no power. I am not powerful that I can oppose Allah. I am not innocent that I can present an excuse to Allah. I am guilty and I am declaring. I am only asking Allah, oh Allah, through your grace and through your mercy, when you take me away from this world, forgive me through your rahmah, through your mercy. But until the last breath of his life, he never took his feet off the accelerator in doing good. Even though he was guaranteed Jannah in this world. So there is no time of low and high. In the life of a Muslim, you don't, you don't exert yourself and then you relax. You go in a relaxing mood and you say what? MashaAllah, I just did Hajj. I am good now. I just finished Ramadan. I am good now. I just fasted for 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. I am good now. And I just go in a relaxing mood. No, that's not what is it. Another Sahabi, a giant of Islam. His name is synonymous to fear. When people hear his name, they tremble. They tremble. The giant, Sayyiduna Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. Who don't know of Umar bin al-Khattab? When he accepted Islam, Jibreel alayhi salam descended. Umar accepted Islam, Jibreel descended from the heavens and he said, Oh Rasulullah, you and your companions are rejoicing on the Islam of Umar. Let me tell you, not only you, but we also in the heavens. 
the angels also in the heavens, we are also rejoicing on the Islam of Umar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for Allah to make Umar accept Islam. The dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on the dua of Rasulullah, he accepted Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is pleased when Umar is pleased. And Umar is pleased when Allah is pleased. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Allah was to send any messenger of any or any prophet after me, if Allah was to send, there was no prophet to come after me, but if Allah was to send any Nabi after me, then it would have been Umar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about him, while I was sleeping one night, the Nabi of Allah is saying, while I was sleeping one night, I saw myself in Jannah. The Nabi of Allah is saying, I saw myself in Jannah. And I saw a beautiful palace in Jannah. And besides this palace, there was a woman making wudu. Rasulullah sallam said, I looked at this palace. And I asked the angel, because this palace was so beautiful, so elegant. I asked the angels, whose palace is this? They said, this will be the palace of Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I wanted to enter his palace to see what is inside his palace. But I remembered his jealousy, his ghayrah, and I did not enter. When Umar radiallahu anhu heard that, he said, O Prophet of Allah, may my parents be sacrificed upon you. How would I have jealousful feelings against you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the truth on the tongue and the heart of Umar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Take Abu Bakr and Umar after me as examples. Follow their examples. The Nabi of Allah said, On the day of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was speaking highly and boasting about all his sahaba. On the night of Arafah, not the day of Arafah, on the night of Arafah, Allah was speaking highly of all my companions. But he said, oh Umar, when it came to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was boasting about you. Allah was mentioning you. You were the highlight of Arafah. You were the highlight. Allah was boasting about you, O oh Umar. Huh? And hear what he's saying. Umar radiallahu anhu is saying that if on the day of Qiyamah, if an announcer makes an announcement, that everyone will go into Jannah except me, then I feel that I will be that exception. Look at the fear in his heart. What kind of a man? A man that in his time, he conquered and ruled over 2,400,000 square miles of the world. How much? 2,400,000 square miles of the world came into Islam during the reign of Umar radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about him, O Umar, once Rasulullah sallam entered Masjid Nabawi, listen to this, what is the privilege of these sahaba? Rasulullah sallam entered Masjid Nabawi and his right side was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and his left side was Umar radiallahu anhu. And Rasulullah SAW told Sahaba, Hakada nuhsharu yawm al qiyamah. This is the way we will be raising on the day of Qiyamah. Wow! What a privilege. Umar, Abu Bakr on my right side and Umar on my left side. Hakada nuhsharu yawm al qiyamah. Rasulullah says to Umar, Oh Umar, what will be your position when you will be placed in the cupboard? Listen to this. What kind of Umar? That Umar, that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you and Abu Bakr will be the leaders of the elderly in Jannah. The elderly people, who will be your leader in Jannah? Like Hassan and Hussein, Sayyidah Shababi Ahl al-Jannah. Hassan and Hussein will be the leaders of the youth of Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu says, Umar and Abu Bakr will be the leaders of the elderly in Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu says, I have two wazir 
in the heavens. You know who is a wazir? Minister. I have two ministers in the heavens and two ministers on earth. My ministers in the heavens are Jibreel and Mikail. And my ministers on earth are Abu Bakr and Umar. And Rasulullah is telling that Umar, Oh Umar, what will be your position when you will be placed into that grave? And Munkir and Nakir will come and question you. Umar radiallahu anhu said, Oh Nabi of Allah, would I have the same iman in my qabr as my iman is right now? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Yes, O oh Umar, your iman will be the same. Umar radiallahu anhu said, Even if my iman will be the same in qabr as it is right now, then I have no worry and no concern. I have no worry and no concern about the questioning of Munkir and Nakir. As Umar got up and he was leaving, as he was leaving, Rasulullah called him back. And he said, Umar, Jibreel just came to me. Jibreel just came to me and he informed me that when you will be placed in your qabr, when you, Umar, will be placed in your qabr, and the two questioning angels will come to question you, instead of them questioning you, you will question them. Instead of them asking you, who is your Allah? You will tell them, Allahu Rabbi Mar Rabbukuma. My Allah is Allah. Who is your Allah? My deen in Islam, what is your deen? My Nabi is Rasulullah. What is who is your Nabi? So the angels will say, We don't know if we were sent to you or you were sent to us. But that Umar is saying, such a privilege. But at the time of his death, did he ever took his foot off the accelerator? Huh? So much accolades. Did he ever say enough was enough? I can say that. You can say that. Huh? You know what he was saying at the time of his death? He said, if I possess the entire world right now, if I have the wealth of the entire world at my feet and my possession right now, and I will give everything away in lieu and in exchange for what is coming ahead of me. Wow. What is coming ahead of me, I will give everything away. That was Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. I'll give you the example of one. Why am I saying this? Sahaba, they never took their feet off the accelerator of good deeds. They were never complacent. They were never satisfied. They never said, okay, let's come only for Jumu'ah and we are fine. No, they never said that. Coming for Jumu'ah, mashallah, is well and good. But don't be satisfied only with that. You don't exert yourself one day in the week and then you go flat. You go flat after that. You go relaxing after that. That's not the life of a believer. That's not the life of a Muslim. Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. You know who was Uthman bin Affan? The only human who had the exclusive privilege to wed two daughters of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The only human being he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored me with 10 accolades that only were given to me and nobody else. Uthman radiallahu anhu was saying. I'm, because of time, I may not able to mention all 10, but I'm going to mention a few. And I'm going to conclude with what I want to say, what he said in the end. The first was, Inni la rabi wa arba'atin fil Islam. I was the fourth person to accept Islam. Fourth. Number four, Uthman radiallahu anhu accepted Islam on the invitation of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So you know what? Everything that Uthman radiallahu anhu did in his life had gone into the credit of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Because it was on Abu Bakr's invitation, Uthman accepted Islam like many other Sahabi. So everything that Uthman radiallahu anhu had done in his life the credit of that had gone in the, in the credit.
credit of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So that was number one. The second was he said, Inni jahastu jaysh al usra. I single handed. It was a very daunting and bleak moment, a very challenging moment when Rasulullah exerted the Sahaba to spend on the occasion of Tabuk. It was at the expedition of Tabuk. And the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he is exhorting the Sahaba, donate, donate towards this expedition. Everyone give diligently whatever they could have given. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu, he stood up. Listen to this. What kind of individual was this person? He stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, mi'atu ba'irin. 100 camels laden with goods on behalf of me and my family. 100 camels laden. Rasulullah made dua for him. He said, Barakallahu feek. May Allah bless you. And he continued his appeal. Who else? Who else is there to give? Uthman radiallahu anhu stood up for the second time. And he said, Oh, Nabi of Allah, mi'atu ba'irin. Ya yeah, Nabi of Allah, another hundred camels laden with goods from my side. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted it. And he said, Barakallahu feek. May Allah bless you. And the Nabi of Allah continued his appeal. The third time Uthman again stood up. This time he brought a bag of gold coins. A bag of gold coins and he gave the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, O Prophet of Allah, take this for the campaign. At this moment, this compliance of Uthman tapped into the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there was a spontaneous dua from the Nabi of Allah for Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu. I have read many books of hadith, alhamdulillah, but I have never come across any dua for anyone that was made by the Nabi of Allah like the dua Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave to Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu on this occasion. Rasulullah was so happy with him. He was so happy. The Nabi of Allah said, غفر الله لك يا عثمان ما قدمت وما أخرت وما أسررت وما أعلنت وما أقفيت وما أبديت وما كان منك وما هو كائن إلى يوم القيامة سبحان الله Rasul Salaam said O oh Uthman may Allah forgive all your sins your present, your past, your future your public, your private all the sins that you have done or you will do not only you you, your children, your family, your entire descendants and your progeny till Qiyamah. Till Qiyamah. Till Qiyamah. Your entire progeny. May Allah forgive all of them. This dua from whom? The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today every one of us despite, uh, we, we, we are desperate for blessings, right? And we ask for dua. It is, not the it is not the requested dua that brings magic. Listen to this. It is not the requested dua that brings magic in your life. It is the dua when you deserve it. It is the dua that when you deserve it will bring the positive changes in your life. Uthman radiallahu anhu deserved the dua from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he tapped into the consciousness of the Nabi of Allah. And that dua came out from the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa spontaneously. Rasulullah made that dua for him. Huh? His other privilege. Inni nakahtur ibn Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I had the privilege of wedding two daughters of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His first wife was Ruqayya radiallahu anha. Tragically, she passed away on the 17th of Ramadan when the Muslims, they were in the battle of Badr. They were in Badr when she passed away. Uthman radiallahu anhu could not participate in Badr. As we know, Allah had forgiven all the Sahaba of Badr. The Badriyin, 
Rasulullah said, you can do whatever you want from this moment. Jannah is yours. He told the Sahaba, the 313 Badri Sahabi who participated in Badr, he said, now, after this battle, you can do whatever you want. Allah has forgiven all of you. So Uthman did not participate in Badr because he was attending to his ailing wife who was the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he just finished burying his daughter, uh, sorry, his wife. And the news came that the Muslims, they were victorious in Badr. One of the qualities of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mutawasilul ahzan da'imat tabassum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had this perpetual grief in him all the time. But he would not show it to people. It would not be seen that he is grieving inside. For this ummah, he was grieving all the time. Da'imat tabassum. But he always had this beaming face. He would always be smiling, right? It is very difficult to marry these two together. It is very difficult to merge these two together. In theory, much less in reality. Uthman radiallahu anhu had to deal with that. He's burying his wife, and at the same time, the news came that the Muslims were victorious in Badr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw him after he buried his wife, that he was depressed, and he was, you know, in sorrow. So the Nabi of Allah said, Oh Uthman, what is the matter? Why do I see you in sorrow and in distress? He said, Oh Nabi of Allah, I am remembering my wife. I am remembering my wife. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he told him, oh Uthman, don't worry, I will give you my second daughter in marriage. Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha. And she was wed to Uthman radiallahu anhu. When Umm Kulthum passed away, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, oh Uthman, law kuntu ashran la If I had ten daughters, if I had ten daughters, then I would have given each one of them in your marriage. Can you imagine what confidence the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa had in Uthman? That he's telling him this? Which father-in-law can tell his son-in-law that? That I have so much of confidence in you that if your wife passed away and I have another daughter, I'll give her in your marriage? Huh? Who can say that? You know what he said? Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu. He says, Ma taghannaytu. Before I mention this, I will tell you one thing more about him. And take this and put it in practice. He was very generous. He was a very generous man. He would give a lot. But on the day of Jumu'ah, on the day of Jumu'ah, he would free a slave. And every Jumu'ah, he would free a slave. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, anyone who frees a slave, Allah will free them from Jahannam. And every Jum'ah he would free a slave. Maybe we cannot do that. But let us do something extraordinary on the day of Jum'ah. Other than the good deeds that we will do during the week. Right? He used to do something extraordinary in Jum'ah by freeing a slave. We do good deeds throughout the week, but let us do something more on the day of Jumu'ah. Raise that bar a little bit higher on the day of Jumu'ah. Give some more sadaqah. Talk to somebody nicely. Do something good for someone. Do some good deed extra on the day of Jumu'ah. Follow the sunnah of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Do something extra. You know what he said? I had never in my life Pre or post Islam, wow, listen to this. Pre or post Islam, I had never committed adultery. I had never listened to music in my life. Wow. Rasulullah Sassam said, A time is going to come. A time is going to come when people from my ummah will consider adultery. The consummation of alcohol, the wearing of silk, the wearing of silk, the consummation of alcohol, consume, you consume alcohol, adultery, they will consider them halal. And you know what he said? 
In every home, you will find music and musical instruments. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he, what he's saying, I have never listened to anything like that before Islam or pre, pre or post Islam. Today, if your wedding don't have music, what do you say? What people say? Is this a funeral home or is this a wedding? Even this has infiltrate in the places where the halls are adjacent to the masajids. You have music. Nabi of Allah says a sign of qiyamah. That in every home. And that's reality today. Uthman radiallahu anhu was saying, I never ever pre or post Islam. And after so many accolades, you know what he said? Whenever he would pass by the grave, whenever he would pass by the qabr, the grave, that grave which all of us will be entering one day, he would weep so bitterly, weep so bitterly that his beard would become soaked with tears. Sahaba would ask him, Oh Uthman, when you hear about Jannah and Jahannam, you would not weep like in this manner as you will weep when you come to visit a grave. You know what he would say? This is the first stage of all the stages coming in Akhirah. If I pass here, then I will pass all the other stages. And if I fail here, then I will be a failure in all the other stages coming. That Uthman, did he ever take his foot off the accelerator? He was worrying about his death. He had, was given dua of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of forgiveness. Huh? His entire progeny. He never said, no, enough is enough. He never said, no, it's a time for me to stop doing. He continued. Every Sahabi continued. Every one of them. But we are complacent. We are satisfied with the little bit that we are doing. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us tawfiq to at least to do a little bit. But bill on that, continue on that. Don't say, yes, this is it. I can't do more. You can. We can. Allah gives us the ability to do more. We can. Challenge yourself how much more I can do. Don't say this is it. Enough is enough. There is no word like enough in the vocabulary of a believer. No way. If someone says enough is enough, deception from shaitan. Because shaitan doesn't want you to go ahead. He doesn't want you to do more. Hey, it's enough. It's enough. I am praying five salah a day. That's enough. I don't need to do anything more. No, that is not enough. I'm fasting in Ramadan. That's enough. That may not be enough. I have done Umrah and that is not enough. It is never enough. Sahaba never said enough. How can we say is enough? When they were guaranteed Jannah, are we guaranteed Jannah? That we say it's enough? No. So it's never enough. Hattal maut. We worship Allah. We stay away from the disobedience of Allah until we die. Until the last breath from this life comes out from our bodies. Until then, we continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continue to obey Allah and stay away from the disobedience of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and the ability to continue obeying Allah throughout our lives and stay away from the disobedience and ma'asiyah. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al -Azim. ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جوال كريم مليك بر رؤوف رحيم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه قال الله تعالى مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وعلى خلفاء الراشدين المهديين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين 
وعلى جميع الصحابة والصحابيات رضوان الله تعالى عليهم جمعين وعلى المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع مجيب دعوات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقيموا straighten the lines make sure you're close to each other Leave no gap in between. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ فَاخْتُلِفَ فِيهِ وَلَوْ لَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ لَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَفِي شَكٍّ مِّنْهُ مُرِيبٍ مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ أَسَاءَ فَعَلَيْهَا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك هم خير البرية جزاؤهم عند ربهم جنات عدن تجري 
جنات عدن تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ذلك لمن خشي ربه الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم brothers and sisters pass the boxes thank you so much for your generosity your donations inshallah I like to thank uh, you know Maulana Roshan for a splendid and informative khutbah inshallah brothers and sisters we have a blood drive and the truck is outside, please do your best to donate your blood because you never know, a member of your family could need it in an emergency. Please, it is very important if you could do that, inshallah. And um, the truck is outside and the, the technicians are there as well. Also, brothers and brothers and sisters, just to remind you, they could get, you could have a copy of the day's khutbah free of charge or for a small donation at our table, inshallah. And viewers also could remember to Donate towards Al Hikmat online for free Kudbah broadcast on the social media, inshallah. Also, brothers and sisters, there's a box there for the police security. Remember to drop one in the a donation there, inshallah. The South Florida Muslim community, in collaboration with Al Hikmat TV, will be having their 14th Quranic competition on Saturday, October 26th, right here at Darulum 12 noon. That the date again. Uh, that is the 26th of October at 12 noon, right here at Dar Ulum, the Quranic competition. Also, I see Brother Naeem, there are flyers in the lobby, having barbecue tonight, inshallah. Uh, delicious, uh, he promised it to be very delicious, inshallah. And there is uh, there's a flyer outside there. We've been asked to make a dua for the brothers and sisters who have passed away and those are unwell. And there's a brother who needs a, a wheelchair or there is a wheelchair actually and a walker in the office for those who need a wheelchair, well, those who need a wheelchair, please see Brother um, Hanif in the office, inshallah. I can't understand that uh, what he wrote there, but um, it's to do with a wheelchair, inshallah, right? See Brother Hanif, inshallah. And now I'll ask Mawlana Roshan to make a dua for those brothers and sisters who are unwell. And those who have passed away, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, alladhi hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fihi kama yuhibbuna wa rabbuna wa yarda. اللهم اشف مرضانا مرض المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا مرض المسلمين اللهم اغفر موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم تجاوز عن سيئات موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اقض حاجاتنا من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين